PTV, oberoende, piratistisk media, skapad och finansierad av tittarna. So we may or may And not have the, there we go. Official, the, the official uh, opinion of the... Sorry. Yeah, that's true. <laughs> I'm just gonna... Hello, everyone. <laughs> Hi everyone. I'm here with uh, Maya. Uh, as usual, these are, as Wednesdays at uh, nine o'clock. We're actually very late. Uh, it's pr mostly my fault. I was super hungry, uh, and I had to eat something. And we actually have an expert commentator today. In uh, who will we, we'll see how long you can stay, right, Henrik? That is correct. We're going to get the official opinion of the Swedish Pirate Party. Exactly. Next night. No, <laughs> yes, you are not. You are going <laughs> yes. to get the opinions of the captain, which is not necessarily the same as the official opinion of it's the party. It's too late now. Yeah, We're it's all going to think it is. Yeah. Sorry. Let's, yeah. Only here, the only one true official opinion of the Pirate Party is going to be blasted out. <laughs> the global Pirate Party. Um, no, ov obviously not. Let's uh, let's not even uh, even almost make a joke about that because then someone is going to take it seriously and I'm going to be uh, I'm going to be oh, oh, the memes that are going to be created is going to be too heavy for me. Uh, I can't handle it. But we actually have a lot of news today, uh, and we'll see we'll see what happens. I mean, I want to start out with uh, you know, uh, you who are watching, feel free to we have a Discord server. Feel free to give us feedback and news and stuff. This show is intended to be a show that is... Uh, there we go, PTV Global. This show is a show that is intended to be about um, international news mostly. But we need your help to kind of develop it and see if we can find something that is both you know, engaging and fun. Uh, because the reality is that some of the EU news can be a little bit boring or hard to get and so on. And we need also to know is, you know... I'm not that into how Europe works, so I may be able to dumb it down with the questions. But, you know, we have no idea of the level of the people who are watching or what, what it is that you may need to learn. So ask questions as well, if there is something that is unclear. Um, something like that. Uh, good. Uh, I think we can just jump right into it. Um we got to start. I mean, it's football, right? I'm not sure. Do you, do you watch football? Any one of you? Not really, no. What about you, Henrik? <laughs> he, he, didn't, he just blew into his mic. Clearly not. Um, not I'm aware about the results of a couple of matches since this, is, this may be like the first time... Uh, Finland's made it to the actual championships ever, so the media and everyone is all over it. Yeah, it's it's huge in Finland, right? Is it really the first time ever? Oh yeah, and they increased they increased the number of teams. That's one of the reasons, no? I'm not sure, honestly. I think they Could doubled be. it from 18 to 32 teams that are actually playing in the finals. Okay, they, then it's probably related. Um. But don't take my word on that. I just read that somewhere. But um, uh, but yeah, that's huge. And you uh, you did play against Denmark. I think you lost. Yeah, there was a lot of drama. There was a lot of drama, and we maybe start with that because they're, Guys, they're probably. I'm sorry, but I need to drop out. Uh, something private came up that needs my attention. So yeah. I couldn't really <laughs> contribute that much as it stood. No problem. No problem. Okay. So good to have you here uh, and on the previous program as well. Yeah, have a good night, uh, Henrik. Ah, well. Um, as you, you Yeah, as you may know, yep. uh, we, there was a... He got injured, right? Did you watch that? I didn't watch it, but I heard about it since it was all over social media as well and yeah. i li listened to part of the match because of that but i don't i'm not really a sports person yeah, yeah. very stereotypical for a pirate probably yeah i think that's pretty uh, i don't think anyone is kind of nice like our uh, our discord is completely empty about this 
But I thought it was worth, you know, okay, if we're going to do some European news, it, it, this, is, this is pretty big news. And yeah, it, it just is. Uh, the whole championship and perhaps, at least I want to be able to tell everyone who may not know, who may have heard that he got, got uh, he actually collapsed on, on pitch and they had to uh, take him off. It looked really dangerous, to be honest. It looked really bad. Uh, but he, we got a message from Christian Eriksen today and he at least looks like he's doing okay, at least awake. Uh, it also looks like he's take. I mean, uh, those drugs, dude. Uh, Pretty but, sure he was already awake at like the by the end of the match. Yeah, he was. But yeah. Uh, there's been like further confirmation about his condition or something. Yeah. It's always so freaky when that happens. I mean, it can be something, yeah. it can be horribly bad. Uh, yep. Apparently, it's not like super uh, typical for this kind of thing to happen. Mm -hmm. Like, obviously, there's like active injuries, but not like, not like this. Yeah. Not people just collapsing. No, collapsing is nasty. I think I've seen that one time before. Um, luckily, it's pretty uncommon. Uh, we got there, got CPR, so yes, pretty bad. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> we are really not the one to comment on this, though, since we don't know. I just thought this one was pretty funny, too. Um, yeah, and there's always, like, despite what some people may want to say or think, uh, there's always politics involved in sports. And, yeah. Yeah, it is. I mean, uh, oh my god. I don't even want to get started on FIFA and all of, this, all of the shit that's happening there. Um, but at least on our Europe, people are making uh, some jokes and uh, the general feeling is pretty good. Um, I gotta say, um, like, <laughs> online, at least, Europeans have one of the best... We have, we have some of the best subreddits uh, with the best kind of... Um, I don't know. It's a, it's a lot of uh, it's a lot of good people online, uh, which always makes me happy to browse like our uh, our Europe and and some other places. Some some of the best communities. Um, but I mean, maybe the similar communities for other parts of the world just aren't on Reddit, or maybe they aren't in English. Yeah, it's. It, it, it's so hard to find. I mean, we talked about we talk about this. I mean, this is one of the reasons we're trying to do this show is to lift a little bit more of European news because it's incredibly important to all of us, but they're very rarely reported. And there is actually quite a few forums that keep any track of European stuff. Right? There is a couple of news sites, uh, but I'm not that comfortable with them so yet, and I don't really know who's behind them, and it's it's hard to know. But I gotta say. Our Europe is at least, uh, that's one of these places where you can find people. And there's, there's like a lot of these kind of nice things, just beautiful pic pictures from Prague. And it's a nice mix of things, actually. It's one of these few kind of political forums and news-oriented forums that isn't delved into, you know, some either some us-against-them sort of uh, way of seeing things. But it's generally quite, uh, quite good to be an online uh, place. Yeah, um, there's always, you just have to, even on subreddits, even on like big subreddits, it's a, a certain kind of culture or moderation policy that you just have to follow them for a while to sort of get a, get an idea of it. There's always some kind of, some kinds of lines being drawn there, mm. even if they're really subtle. But it's nice to have yeah. something that isn't like, Biased at first glance, I guess. No, I, I think they. I, I'm, I'm pretty sure they moderate the hell out of that one to keep it as clean as it is. But I, I'm happy about that because it's it's pretty, it's good. Um, and one of the first uh, things that we actually brought up in the in the previous show uh, that's worth mentioning at least is that we have some drama between the Czech Prime Minister. Who is predicting that Muslim majority in Sweden? Who's predicting a Muslim majority in Sweden, Netherlands in coming decades? Um, you, so you did find a news source for that that wasn't some like Russian uh, state-funded media. I think That's it's nice. pretty. Ah, uh, it's probably probably more or less. What but do you have against the Russian state-funded media? Привет. Yeah, I mean. 
Where do you think we get our money Hello. from? Hello. <laughs> yeah, obviously. Yeah, clearly we were so positive. So, so many sources of funding. Yeah. Um. That's why we seem so unbiased. We get our funding from everywhere instead of just one source. Yeah, we, we keep lying to everybody. We go, hey, Mr. Putin, we're going to promote your shit. Give us money. And then we go to Biden. Hello, sir. Give us money. We will promote your shit. Mm. And then we hate on everybody. True story. And the, the the funny thing is, like this whole this whole thing, I like, first of all, we talked about the Czech Prime Minister Bavis, right? Before, actually, I think last week, um, just noting that he is in his, in a huge corruption scandal and uh, has been for quite some time. There is uh, Europe is not going to do anything about it. They're just saying, take the money you want. We don't really care. Or rather, yes, you are corrupt. And but no, we're not going to do anything about it. Luckily, though, for us pirates, perhaps is that the pirate party is leading currently together with their alliance, and hopefully they are going to kick him out in the upcoming election. And this is probably one of the reasons that has prompted him to go even more far right. I mean, this is such a classic far right talking point. All of this stuff about, um, you know, the, I mean, it's great replacement stuff. This has been, um, I mean, peddled by uh, pretty much Nazis forever, but has become more mainstream with conservative um, right wing people to say these sort of things uh, lately. We want to end up like Sweden. Yeah. And I mean, Sweden is being used like this always. And it's, it's kind of fun to see because you, you can really draw a line. Uh, like, I guess, at least for me, who live in Sweden and, and look at this data and understand this at a more intimate level, I can say you have to pass so many retarded hoops to make these calculations to, be, to begin with. And also, it's, it's, I mean, it's just ridiculous. I think it's based on, and, and they say down here, in 2017, the US Pew Research Institute, okay, this <laughs> is not the source you want to be using, um, published a study, demographic changes in Europe based on religious affiliation. By 2050, Sweden was estimated to have a larger proportion of Muslim residents in many other European countries, Pew concluded. So what this norm, what this, never takes into account is the fact that a lot of people uh, change their religious affiliation. It's also like into, they tend to look at to the immigration numbers in 2015, which were, ex I mean, it's more than uh, around 10 times as high as they normally are, um, particularly then looking at the um, uh, uh, asylum seekers. So I mean, th there's this been debunked a billion of t billions of times, but um, I, g I guess the only way to see this is uh, like some form of uh, desperation, uh, uh, because I don't. I, if I can understand correctly, he hasn't gone that far right to peddle these sort of uh, ideas in in that in that type of context. Um. But we'll see. Um, we'll see. Uh, it's gonna be. It's heating up though for an for an election, right? Uh, quite soon in September, if I'm not. Either September or October. Yeah. So it's very soon. It's and not. The polls are looking great for the pirates. Yeah, they're not looking great for the corrupt prime minister who originally was if i correct me if i'm wrong here both of you uh is a kind of like an oligarch who were more neoliberal to start with but i mean he's taking his turns into kind of like mo a lot a lot of libertarians do in or neolibs do go more and more fascist more and more into this uh, immigration stance trying to to pick up those votes um <laughs> we can focus on Unreal Engine instead. <laughs> True. Uh, Service economy. Again. Yeah, oh my god, my chat is fucked up. I'm sorry, I can't read what you're saying. 
Do you, can you check the chat? Some do you have no, it? So I'm you can looking see? at it. Okay. Yeah, I rated someone before, and then my chat is gone. That's the way it works. Um, yeah, there isn't much in addition to that one. Uh, there's like Botwerka Commune replacement stuff. I'm yeah. not sure what that means, but maybe it's maybe you can explain. Uh, Botwerka is one of the uh, one of the so-called no-go zones, which is a uh, word that I, is just generally used for. Uh, yeah, I, I'm aware about the no-go zone discourse, yeah. just not about. Maybe Butchika all the is a parts, wonderful place to visit. Not all the areas that are it gets applied to, I guess. Yeah, it's like, yeah, if you go there and provoke people, they're gonna be pissed, you know. But you can go anywhere in Sweden and try to provoke people. I can, uh, uh that's as much as I can say. Who live, uh, or now I live mostly in the studio, but I have an apartment and I lived a long time in one of these no-go zones. But it, it's, a, it's a narrative that is super strong and super easy for them to use. I mean, we saw it on Tucker Carlson the other week where they once again shit, shit blamed Sweden. And it's not even Swedish people. There's Dutch people there talking about pretending to be Swedish, talking about how bad it is in Sweden. It's quite ridiculous. Um, but, I mean, it, it's a narrative that they're using and they're going to keep on using. It's a little bit shocking, though, to see uh, Babish go straight into the Great Replacement. Uh, and using that extremely strong uh, type of language. Because, um, I mean, I knew he was kind of neolib, but I didn't know th that he was fishing in those waters quite that heavily. It might not be as much of a surprise to anyone who's, like, followed a country or, like, the, that, uh, or, like, Babesia's character for a longer time. I'm not saying I'm one of those people, but it's a, pretty typical trajectory for many of these like populist uh like so-called liberal figures so it might have been going off for a longer time it just hasn't made international headlines until now no probably not um yeah you can show some sources for your claims that'd be great up there um, anyway, uh, The Great Replacement is on its way back. I think we're going to have to have a big uh, big episode where we talk about that. Oh, we, I could recommend that anyone who doesn't, who have problems understanding statistics, country of origin, uh, religion, and all of these sort of things, or how uh, basic biology works, right? What does someone become when they have two parents, right? If you, <laughs> which most people uh, have. I mean, what, you know... Uh, Sean has made an excellent video on this uh, that goes through exactly why uh, that sort of uh, every single time in history we tend to integrate and if we work towards that well then where are you the fuck are you going to draw that line? Right? Uh, anyhow, we're going to go we're going to keep triggering uh, the, the right wingers with this one. Oh boy. <laughs> we are un we are unloading because, as you know, the free speech uh, uh, right wing are obviously outraged that people are taking a knee. I mean, I imagine that people exercising their freedom of expression. Yeah, I mean it's horrible. So absolutely a lot horrifying. So a lot of people in Britain said they want to cancel. <laughs> And it was the same in Sweden. Unfortunately, I would say the Swedish team hasn't done it, which I think would be hilarious, to be honest, seeing the free speech crowd explode in how, in how this should be forbidden, how this is yada, 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 yada. It, it, it immediately goes to show that the, the freedom of expression is kind of a one-way street uh, when it comes to stuff. Um, but yeah, Intercept has a quite long... Uh, uh, expose on this yeah um, as, as already said like you can't untangle uh politics from sports and the other way around no it's impossible yeah uh, i mean absolutely 
Uh, absolutely. And I, y this is kind of... The, the problem is this. I believe that a large... And, and it's natural as well, you know, a large group of people in Europe uh, have brought up in in ways where they don't see so where they don't see things they do you know where they don't see the uh, oppression that's going on and they don't think that there could be anything racist or inherently problematic with certain stuff that are being challenged on it and suddenly they wake up and are unhappy that this is now political something that for a lot of people uh, not a part of that group has always been political right so I mean, always been there yeah always been there and always been uh, something but this is a pretty good article the intercept always does uh, goes kind of in depth into this stuff if you want to read a little bit more nice flinterdun oh okay sorry that's not in our channel i'm crazy i can't even <laughs> i can't even link this in the chat right um ah fuck let me see if i can set it up I need to stop doing this. I, when I raid, I need to find a way to get back properly. I think I can. Oh. Yay, it's working. There you go. Um, mm -hmm. But yeah, what would happen if they took a knee in uh, Finland? I'm actually not sure. I I'm just so unfamiliar with the whole, you know, I don't know sports scene or like whether there even is enough of a soccer scene. Like it's it's been getting more mainstream in the past decade, I guess. But uh, Finland has been more of a hockey country forever, so that's what gets more. Uh, tends to get more attention, but again, this could just be sort of my filter bubble speaking. <laughs> could be that could be that they're just as much of a thing. It's just that they aren't as visible for me. Yeah. Nah, I guess I'm sure. I'm sure there would be people getting extremely upset, but I'm not sure. And may maybe the media would like latch onto it to get some clicks. But I can't imagine it being like a huge national drama. Yeah, in Sweden, it would it would definitely be. It's kind of fun. Like all of the right wing newspapers went out in, and and in anticipation of this, they had articles afterwards that it was so lucky they didn't do that. You know, like <laughs> it's it's. Uh, I would love it if they did. Uh, to be honest, I gotta say. Um, just for the outrage, yeah, yeah, just for the just for the incredible double standards that these people tend to have when it comes to uh, and and they immediately will say they have to be ousted from the teams, they have to be, and then they ca talk about you know cancel culture as something bad, and they talk about free speech, and, and it, it just it just completely shatters their narrative. And weirdly enough, they seem to not even see that. They don't even consider it, uh, you know, as something, uh, you know, they didn't even see that uh, as a problem. Uh, but most other people do, and it makes for good, uh, good laughs. Um, anyhow, we're going to talk about the EU ban to cage farming. This is potentially positive, right? Yep. Uh, but maybe not yep. as possible positive as one as i think the first uh, at least the second art uh, one of these articles talks about um yeah you might want to open the article itself there we go so the european parliament overwhelming backs ban and caged animal farming i think there's a s short video about this yeah. mm. the european parliament is calling for a ban on the use of cages for farm animals MEPs have overwhelmingly backed a European Citizens Initiative, launched in September 2018. The petition has so far gathered nearly 1.4 million signatures in at least 18 member states, 
in support of animal welfare. We have estimated, and this is a very conservative number, that over 300 million animals, farmed animals, are uh, spend uh, most of their lives or their entire lives in cages in Europe every year. Farmers and producers are following the debate with interest, as well as some apprehension. If a ban did happen, a review of how farms are developed would be required. These investments can be easily hundreds of thousands of euros, if not millions of euros. And so we are not, uh, from a private individual point of view, we are talking about major investment that you simply cannot decide on how to go forward on your own decisions. It is very much about the bank manager that actually is calling the shots, what you can do and what you cannot do. This organization representing producers wants to work with the European institutions, but it feels that it doesn't have answers to every question, including the length of any transition period or the amount of financial aid that would be needed. It also takes a dim view of the fact that the request is too vague and doesn't take into account the major differences in producing across the industry. What goes in, in, the, in the south of Europe is probably no longer that much available in the north of Europe. In my native Finland, we have uh, down to 30, minus 30 degrees zero temperatures. So it's obvious for all of us that the animals have to be in an enclosure to protect them from the elements. This adaptation to the sectorial and specific production condition is completely missing from the initiative. The organization also points out that if cages were to stop being used in the farm sector, it could increase production costs and risk European producers losing some competitiveness. But animal rights activists say that this initiative is part of the Commission's farm to fork strategy, which aims to reduce the environmental and climate impact of producing. Uh, with cage farming and, and move away from cage farming, we hope that we will move to a more sustainable animal agriculture. And uh, last but not least, uh, we're absolutely certain that a move away from caged uh, farming uh, is very much in line with the farm to fork strategy that this commission endorses. MEPs want the commission to carry out an evaluation study, including a possible transition period for implementation by 2027. Crystal Pitches, Euronews, Brussels. Mm -hmm. Oops. But, I mean, the... Um, I, I think you have the, the typical... I, uh, this First of all, maybe we should give the background a little bit. This started as a citizen's initiative, right? Yep. And that's maybe the one of the... <sighs> more notable things about this since citizens initiatives don't tend to do super well in when they get to the parliament usually they get bogged down somewhere along the process or they uh, manage to strike them down on some technicality but this one apparently made it all the way to a full vote and hasn't at least been like outright uh, rejected so that's a, that's interesting at least we should probably at some point just uh, bring up a list of all the citizens initiatives historically and see how many and what kind have actually passed since as far as i'm aware it's not common for them to get that far yeah and uh citizens initiative uh I'm not sure what the site is like, whether it's like readily available there, the information, but it's one million signatures uh, from, uh, and it has to be from seven different EU countries minimum. So it's actually a fairly small number. Yeah. Considering the po entire population of the EU. Yeah. And I, I gotta say as well, I mean, this is a part like, um, this is a part of the, an initiative that has been around for quite a, uh, I mean, rather, this is a part of that, and I think that's why it's gaining support, uh, or why this was able to be passed so fast, because it's, it's actually a part of the strategy that EU has already, that is already on to, to improve the sustainability of, of um, well, a lot of different things. There's a, there's a huge, uh, but this is one of the objectives to, to increase the sustainability of, of uh, farming. Um, 
And I mean, it's the same type of arguments that you will always hear, you know, and, and I think this is the, this always kind of surprised me. What do you think that the industry will say? Like I mean, the, we had, yeah, we had some of that during the video already. So yeah, it's um, it's the exact. It's obvi obviously, it can't be done, and this is like, do you really think uh, you know what you're doing? It's the same every time. But I mean, I did hear some of like something similar to what's been going on in other sectors that are going to be hit hard by these climate targets such as some like fossil energy uh, industries, like they are actually being surprisingly realistic. They're trying to sort of like hedge and back down a bit, try to explain that, uh, you know, this is going to hit us hard economically. This is a big deal. Like this has to be done with uh, like due consideration and we shouldn't be too hasty. Like they're not saying like, no, absolutely not. It's impossible anymore. No, uh, sort of softening the message, so they actually do know the end is nigh. But those, uh, and you can tell like by how they've switched tactics recently. Yeah, the, uh, I mean the reality is as well that m the the reason why we have a competitive edge is because people believe that uh, produce from the European Union has higher quality. Or, uh, in Africa's case, where we just fuck them up. But that's, uh, the, at least when it comes to the rest of the world, that's the whole reason. So most of the industry ha understand, they, they're going to sound like this is horrible, but they know that this type of loss will increase the ability to export. It will increase the value. And again, it's all about selling stuff. I mean, um, uh, so... I, I hate to hear that argument, the, particularly when it comes to that. No one is buying from Europe because it's cheap. You, stu I mean, they're gonna buy from uh, Brazil. They're gonna, they're gonna buy from. I mean, it's just pretty obvious um, in in these cases. And again, like we are just talking about chickens, uh, pigs, and what else, right? There was just a limited uh, amount of animals. The resolution text you had. I think you got it open as well. Yeah, here, right. So there's, so it's just uh, the ones that are specifically mentioned are directives regard, uh, concerning like laying hens, calves, pigs, oh, and rabbits. Go. And then there's some generic ones like protection and welfare of animals, uh, protection of animals kept for farming purposes and the like. But at least going by the ones listed here, uh, fur farming, for instance, isn't uh, touched by this one. Which mm. is kind of a shame, really. Since many European countries have already, for instance, I believe Denmark has, during this whole coronavirus debacle, uh, decided to uh, shut down the fur farming industry in the country. Since it turns out that fur farms are really efficient incubators for the coronavirus and just any zoonotic disease that's at all yeah so the sensible you know it might be a hard blow for the industry uh to have to shut everything down but i mean when the other option is accidentally generating like a killer strain of covid or something else one would imagine that like they would be at least very interested in just taking you know whatever uh handout the government will give them in exchange for quitting the industry but i don't know it can it's kind of hard to find any kind of sense <laughs> in these things often no no and and i yeah i mean particularly now but it's just it becomes i mean it's just less and less and less and hopefully or rather um at least the far these type of farmers but even even the farmers that do fur they are selling 
quality stuff. That's the whole point. It's the only reason why you would buy Norwegian salmon, right? For instance, just as an example. Yeah. Or Danish. Yeah, they beef. think it's better or more ethical or anything really like some somehow uh decidedly better and i mean like stuff just constantly comes up like countries that are in the eu or at least subject to eu regulations such as norway like wasn't there like some massive uh scandal in sweden just a while ago about like chicken or something oh yeah there was two The first one was that they were boiling them alive because they didn't cut their heads off properly. And then that the anal drill, <laughs> that it's called, What the uh, hell? wasn't working properly. So it was like fecal matter and intestines all over the chicken. Jesus Christ. I mean, it's absolutely... For, it's disgusting, right? I mean, and it's, yeah. it's yeah. worse than that. I mean, we could have... And, and th th this becomes the problem to at least when it comes to exporting stuff i mean i know we're on a race to the bottom where where people can't really afford any any quality in the in the uh, locality but for the export market people still believe european europe to be a, a a place where you can get quality there's still some faint belief in that and that's like if, to ask to come if we want to compete i i mean either we want to become um you know, more, go back to, to becoming something mo much more like China, but that's also going to require the same type of salaries, right? Or we are actually going to have to move forward. And that means also increasing the quality of the stuff that we do. Yeah. Good mm -hmm. evening, chat. Uh, we are discussing, I mean... Anal drills. Apparently, yes. But uh, we were discussing a ban on cage farming of animals that the EU Parliament just voted on. Yeah. Uh, and we also had to ban people. <laughs> I did it though. Yeah, um, we'd, we've had some, uh, I don't know, great replacement peeps. advocates, yeah. question mark, in the chat tonight. Uh, yeah. Hey, and look, this... This 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 stuff. Speaking of banning stuff, yeah. Hung Hungary That's has a smooth transition. Yeah. Speaking of banning, just keep banning things. Yeah, Hungary passes law banning LGBT content in school kid schools or kids TV. And, yeah, and this is basically, I believe, the same stuff uh, that Russia did, like 10 or 15 years back. I can't remember exactly. But basically, this whole protect the children spiel, uh, we can't tell the children about LGBTQ people existing thing. Yeah. So, and, and essentially what this means, right? I mean, the, the practical implications of this is that you cannot show any gay couples. You cannot have any type of talking points about this. You can obviously not uh, have any sexual education. That goes out, even if I, I think they pretty much screwed that up uh, already. But this is essentially, uh, uh, I mean, no matter where, no matter how you look at this, this is um, a systematic type of discrimination. This is law, by law discrimination. And I mean, we have people in Sweden talking about this too. And you got to remember... Whenever they say oh, we shouldn't do this, I mean, what do you want to do? Do you want to? Are you trying to say that homosexual people should be banned from showing their love in in things that could be shown for kids? What what is it that you're meaning here? What, what's so horrible? We had, um, and I think it's everywhere. You know, the, the kind of sort of same reactionary stuff where where they're pretending to be super upset or are maybe are super upset with uh, um, uh, uh, other. Uh, with, with people that are essentially living other life than the traditional uh, staying uh, man and wife and preferably also as well white, uh, whenever that is being showed or somewhere uplifted or, God forbid, even explained, um, then that's some form of left-wing propaganda. And the question is, what do you want to do? Is you, are you going to for forbid this? Because again, 
um, it's so antithetical to free speech and it hurts this community beyond belief, obviously. Um, man and white. F there we go. Uh, yeah, this is like, this is the first step. You go like, what about the children? And yeah, you basically start controlling the media and education with this pretense. And then you move on to more and more restrictions and more and more discriminatory discriminatory policies. I mean, they're pretty far along in Hungary already. They're probably going to go after women women's rights soon uh, soon soonish. Yeah. What well, it's what it means is that they'll put uh they typically will put a new governmental body in charge of checking everything and deciding what can be in schools and what can't. I mean, it's, it, it's, um, th that's the function of it, right? And they're there to control it. And if you are not on the party's good side or the politician's good side, or if you have, uh, you know, anything that they deem to be uh, not inside of the law, you may be banned or expelled or not being able to work as a teacher. It's, it's these type of things, and it's worth to see, and it's worth to look at. Because on the one hand, you know, uh, th at least, I mean, this is the only solution to the problem that a lot of right-wing people have that are, th this is the only practical solution. Uh, again, is governmental type of control of, uh, of uh, direct interference, rather, yeah. in what shows are... It's trying to... Basically, right, uh, right, certain kinds of people out of existence, socially. Yeah. Alpha Buffa is asking: Did anything happen with the Hungarian EU minister who participated in the gay orgy? I actually don't know. I can't remember either. Like, did they? Like EU minister? Was it a? Wasn't it an MEP? I think it was an MEP. Yeah. But like he you, climbed out unless the back he of the resigned himself. By himself, he, he not, nothing probably happened to him unless he resigned by himself. Since you can't, there isn't really a mechanism to remove MEPs from the duties. There mm. just isn't. You vote them in, and they stick. Uh, they stay there for five years. There's a Finnish MEP who basically lives in Honduras with his. Uh, I guess, I'm not sure if he has a local wife or something, but anyway, he lives in Honduras and probably doesn't do much in terms of parliament work, but he was voted in. There's nothing anyone can do about it. There is no right or wrong way to perform your duties. Um, yeah. I mean, I can... I can also I can read some more here if there's some questions. The, the Hungarian legislation outlaws sharing information with under 18s that the government considers to be promoting homosexuality or gender change. So, uh, like this is essentially what it means. It, it prohibits them. Exactly how these type of punishments uh, look like is normally you you are forbidden from from doing your work. You get taken if you're working with this, you'll be expel, uh, expelled from it. And I mean, it can go all the way up to prison. I, I think in yeah. in in um, uh, in um, particularly in Russia, uh, they're pretty hard on that. That's pr that's. Uh, uh, I mean, you lose your job note, and you go to prison. Also important to notice how vague this is. Like yeah. the government considers to be promoting homosexuality or gender change, so it could be anything. Like it could be any kind of cross-dressing, any kind of like clothing choices that don't fit a certain norm. It could be just any, you know, breach of gender norms at all. Like, it can be taken a bit pretty far. Yeah. And I mean, what, what's so... At, it's at purposefully the vague. Like, yeah. that's how these things work. They make it purposefully vague so they can just use their authority and, yeah... Uh, make it arbitrary enough that people become too scared to even toe the line. Mm. People start self-censoring and like, you know, trying to 
consider it in advance and yeah i mean uh, and it's it's it it comes from the same sort of moral outrage and i think what's worth to to remember here when people are outraged at nickelodeon for having uh, for for actually showing uh, people who are living outside of the norm it's you got to ask these people what what do you want to do about it like what's your idea because this tends to be the only idea they have and this is like this is literally <laughs> like hey you want to talk about communism you know so you're actually going to let the government go in and decide in detail and have special organs and have special uh, people that they appoint that gets to decide exactly what is and isn't uh, approved in this type of detail. Uh, it's quite explicit. Uh, there are contents which children under a certain age can misunderstand and which may be a detrimental effect on the development at the given age or which children simply cannot process, process and which could therefore confuse their developing moral values or their image of themselves or the world. Um, like uh, normally so yeah at least i mean they they'd have to they'd have to be blocking the entire internet from anyone under 18 if they intended to actually you know <laughs> fulfill the spirit of the law or whatever mm. since i mean the internet is full of things that children under a certain age can misunderstand uh but <laughs> and I mean, even even the world is. Yeah. Um, so we're going to start hearing all of these things. So, I mean, you can take this. The law also means that only individuals and organizations listed in an official register can carry out sex education classes. Companies and large organizations will also be banned from running adverse in solidarity with gay people. The law means that TV shows and films featuring gay characters or even a rainbow flag would be permitted only after the watershed. I guess that's later at night. Amnesty International's Hungarian chapter, which is okay. So, I mean, um, welcome, welcome to uh, to the uh, the um, uh, yep. Welcome to the governmental uh, direct control over your media. So, a pretty typical example of an argument in chat, if we're going to engage this guy. Uh, this is a very typical thing, uh, associating any and all, like every LGBTQ topic or just representation in media with sex, like this like over-sexualization or essentializing of uh, LGBTQ people. Yeah, I don't understand the inherently question. Inherently, overtly sexual, or inherently more sexual than uh, heterosexuals, or whatever no, uh, is considered the norm. This is ex an extremely typical argument, and <sighs> oh, yeah, I think we could. It's just wrong. Like I can engage a bit. I think it's fun. Yeah, I mean. So the question also is the so whole, uh, hormone treatment yeah. for S trans kids is another topic entirely. Or yeah. well, not another topic entirely, but this might take a while. Yeah. So do we take the bait? Mm, yeah, I can. Uh, I can take. The bait. I, I just. I'll, I'll read the question. So you think it's acceptable to talk uh, about sex with young kids you don't know and promote operations in testosterone or antisorcerin pills to the same kid? What are you talking about? Who is talking about that? Who is talking about random people walking up to kids talking about sex? We're talking about films. We're talking about uh, sex education. We're talking about schools, representation in schools. I mean, what are you trying to say? Are you trying to say that sex education is strangers that are promoting testosterone pills to kids. Is that like is that your understanding of what's going on? Like 
Uh, I mean, you you got the hugest fucking straw man created right there. Also, uh, if we're going to have a conversation, you're going to have to answer our questions as well. So if you're just in there to fire off questions, then there isn't going to be a discussion. Uh, no, it's a... Uh... You can. We know you can so do would better. You, yeah. Would you like to answer us? Who is saying these kinds of things? Who is doing these kinds of things? Yeah, you can answer that. Who is walking around doing, uh, promoting these to to young kids, strangers in the streets, yeah. probably? And there's so another good question in chat. Is this? Is the issue just about the LGBTQ part, or do you have an issue with sexual education in general? Like, do you think it's wrong for schools, for instance, to talk about sex with children or students? I mean, we we also age? we also just explained the laws that they're having now, which is that the government will have a body that okays what and cannot be shown or uh, who and uh, who can actually do sex education they're banning companies they're banning movies right this is direct governmental control and it's up to the politicians clearly to decide what is and isn't okay so the politicians should decide this sort of stuff and what what and this i think is one of the most important things for people to read because once again, the free speech crowd, the moment they actually get any form of power, they do everything to limit exactly that. Um, this is, and whenever you hear someone being outraged that, that, that there are representation of people that are minorities and, you know, in different types of ways in our society, and that's horrible for whatever reason. They owe you an answer to why that is so bad and also how they're going to solve it. Because it, it tends to come with these police Stasi uh, fascist uh, ideas. Um, So you don't have any <laughs> you, don't, you don't have any opinions on this I am sure, I'm sure that husband and Kenta says uh, I wasn't referring to the Hungarian law but to morals I mean you're 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 talking about something no one is talking about here that's what we're pointing out you're you're coming in saying so you think it's acceptable to talk about sex with young kids you don't know. You know, based on the fact that we don't think that the government should decide, have a little special, you know, and decide what's homosexual or not. And whether these people should be in jail for, 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 for doing sex ed or not. For recognizing, or whether they should, for recognizing you know. the fact that homosexual people exist. I mean, it's, um, yes, it's a little bit of a different uh, thing you're talking about. And that's the point. And this is also often a great example of how people with the, these type of attitudes argue. So, what are you saying? You don't, so you want to, you want to... Uh, you you want all of these you 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 want uh, some you want children to get raped is that it now like that sort of stuff and you're like it, it's completely I mean, not has nothing to do with it um maybe like we can direct focus off the right wing trolls in the chat even though he is one of the better trolls he is still a troll <laughs> yeah snooze is snooze is snooze yeah, but it's it's okay, worth to take really, that particular I mean, argument because it's very common, yep. and I and that sort of straw mans are, that's not okay. Argue with what we're talking yeah. about, not some not something that is made up. Yeah. yeah. Um. Anyhow, uh, this is actually a pretty good news on the same uh, 
manner. Um, specifically given that we have these problems with blood and because of the rigorous testing that you go through, it's quite, uh, there's been a lot of quite ridiculous laws about um, gay and bisexual men not being able to donate blood. Um, and those guidelines basically date back to to the AIDS pandemic. That's that's it. That's literally it. Yeah. And um, uh, I, I'm pretty sure uh, this is allowed in Sweden since a long time ago. But it's it's good it's good that it's opening up. We have issues with the amount uh, with the number of blood. Whenever you go there, for those who have given blood, uh, if you haven't done so in some time, you're going to get tested. It's pretty... Uh, I mean, they're not joking around. So, uh, it's pretty good. However, the UK, in some other ways, have been moving in a, in a pretty... Um, in, a, in a way that's very, very similar to Sweden. Maybe you want to talk about this one. Also, the blood donation thing is... it's tri I think it's still pretty common. It's not just the UK. It's like that in Finland as well. And I think the Red Cross, like since it internationally runs a lot of these operations, uh, it tends probably is pretty uniform. So it's not just like the UK being somehow backward, but it's actually a common practice still to block gay and bisexual men categorically from donating yeah. blood. Yeah, and I mean, exactly. Today, it's it's a completely outdated uh, law. That you, exactly what you say. It stems back from uh, from that sort of time, and it's it's just uh, feeding into and stereotypes. They, yeah, and they test all the sam uh, like they take samples and test all of it anyway, and yeah, the, there are under like super. I ha haven't looked very deep into the topic, but it's not very logically consistent with some of the other restrictions, for instance. Yeah, and UK, but UK has been backsliding. We saw that there is a couple of things. They they are passing laws to restrict uh, campus free speech and organization, like literally uh, protests from students. Yeah, and uh, they basically scrapped an entire uh, reform uh, regarding gender uh, affirming, uh, 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 gender confirmation or affirmation. I can't recall what the uh, right uh, what the term they use there is, but basically, trans uh, transgender legislation legislation that concerns the right to medical care, and also uh, the process uh, that governs the process you go through to legally change your gender. Yeah. So we may read a little bit. We're actually getting into this now, Kenta, so you can <laughs> get pissed about this. Uh, how are trans rights being threatened in the UK? Um, underneath the storm of the pandemic, transgender rights in the UK have yet again been put under threat, this time via legal action concerning access to healthcare and public facilities. Trans rights have made headlines over the last year from J.K. Rowling's online essay defending her transphobic online activity, which was denounced by fans and critics alike, to the government's dismissal of Wurlara, but I did not mean to click that one. Um, <laughs> did not look like... But that was a gender recognition reform. Uh... To the government's dismissal of uh, gender recognition reform, the latest legal motions passed push back against the progress made with trans rights since the turn of the millennia. Last year, Carabella, a former patient at T T Tavis Oak and Portman Trust, took legal action against the NHS gender identity clinic in the controversial Belvis Travistock case. Tavistock case. She claimed uh, that she should have been challenged further by medical staff in decision to transition to male as a teenager. Uh, under the care of Tavistock, Bell received puberty blockers. Uh, and a year later was prescribed testosterone. In December, the High uh, Court ruled that children under 18 years were not able to give informed consent to receiving puberty blockers, uh, with Dame Victoria Sharp stating that it's doubtful that a child aged 14 or 15 could understand and wait in 
the long-term risk and consequences of the administration of puberty blockers. In response, NHS England updated the service specification to rule that anyone under 16 would have to obtain a court order to access hormone blockers and that those aged 16 or 17 would also need a court order. Puberty blockers are instrumental in preventing puberty for young trans people, which can take a tra traumatic toll on their mental health. They prevent irreversible body changes which can make transitioning harder further down the line. For example, breast growth or voice dropping. Lose okay, so, as yeah. So I just like to interrupt you here and a short note about puberty blockers. They might explain it later on in the article. But basically pu puberty blockers aren't the same as uh testosterone or estrogen. It's basically a medication that prevents the uh, uh, it basically slows down the process of puberty and it's given to like uh, non-trans kids as well kids that are going through or like, they start going through puberty too early like early enough that it's considered by the like they find uh, the kid themselves uh, finds it upsetting or they start having like social difficulties due to it en uh, enough that it's decided with the uh, with both the parents and uh, medical professionals, that it might be better to just slow things down a bit. So this is a form of medication, this is a form of healthcare that is already given to kids, and it's obviously deemed safe enough to give to kids temporarily. So it, there is no other explanation for like restring, restricting the access or restricting the prescription of these to trans kids, because yeah. uh, at least not one that relies on uh, like protecting the kids from permanent harm. Yeah, why this? Why this tends to be uh, an okay? So yeah, exactly. I mean, the the first thing, the first thing is this, uh, and this tends to be how it how it works in most countries. All right, what happens is that. When you are, if you're, if you're, when you're a bit younger, in, like at least in Sweden, you and your family will go to see a, a doctor, and you will, uh, you will see a psych psychiatrist. You will see several. They will follow you. They will then start following up for about a year, sometimes longer, to see if uh, to see if you su if you suffer from or not. I shouldn't say suffer from, but if you have gender dysphor dysphoria. If that's what they uh, they believe that you have, you can choose uh, again together with the same professionals as well as your family to get puberty blockers. Okay, puberty blockers is not uh, changing anything. It's not giving you hormone. It's halting your puberty. Okay, and then if you get special, um, uh, like if you if you if you super push for it, and if the doctors approve. Etc. 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 I think as early, very rarely, but I think I, it, it's from case to case. But I believe there are cases where they have been 16 years old. But typically, they wait until you're 18 years old, where you have to make the final decision. And wh why they make these decisions when they're 16 years old is typically because there is an imminent threat to, to this person's life, right? Uh, for different reasons. Um, a lot of these people commit suicide. Right, this is suicide uh, degree here. That's incredibly high. But the general misunderstanding here is that a thirteen-year-old kid who just—and this is the right-wing uh, idea—and it's it's really been biting hold of a lot of people because obviously, who is gonna get try to get in, you know try to understand this situation? It's much easier to say, yeah, well, these crazy leftists—they just. These thirteen-year-old uh, uh, girls that just feel like a boy for a day, they go to the clinic, and then all of a sudden they get their gender taken away. And remember here that when we're talking about hormonal treatment, that's still not that's still not the actual operations, right? They would come later, uh, and and all of these steps are not something are not something that these are something that you do in conjunction with a psychiatrist, with all of these things, you tend to be extremely well-informed. And that's why cases like this, like they bring up here, 
Kara Bell's case, despite having 20,000, tens of thousands of these operations, there are incredibly few people who actually uh, regret it to this level. And remember that puberty blockers on its own are reversible. If you stop taking puberty blockers, they, uh, they are reversible. Okay, I'm going to say in 100% of the cases, because they may have some small effect on the bone density, depending on, but in generally, they are reversible. And as you say, the puberty blockers thing, that's something we've been giving to kids for ages, all right? In fact, we are giving children hormones. I was a small kid growing up, and they were talking about giving me hormones so I would become taller. This, this is something that is done already. It's not something that is new. And um, all of this mis misinformation about this is horrible. And it's, it's, affecting, it's starting to affect policy now, where politicians who obviously, I mean, trying to explain this to someone who is either fanatically against this horrible SJW stuff, you know. Someone I mean, who doesn't know anything about the topic at all. Yeah. I mean, there, there, you may be able to convince some, but yeah. it's a complicated topic. And quite frankly, something that should be left to the experts in the field. And these are the people who are complaining. Right? Well, the experts in the fields and also the advocates, advocates who are speaking for the group, groups themselves, since it's also like from an entire different perspective, the issue with the process to get your gender recognizing, to get the healthcare you need, or the uh, whatever corrective procedures you feel you need, is that the process is really arduous. It's quite the opposite from like just walking in and getting, uh, yeah, as you said, your, well, your gender removed. It's quite the opposite for, of that in most countries. It actually takes a long time. They usually make you wait until you're of age and, uh, before you can get any care at all. Yeah. That's also a reason why it's so cruel of them to... Uh, take back or prevent the prescription of puberty, pu puberty blockers because it's that's the one thing they can do like uh, that doesn't incur any permanent changes while people are underage or like it's, it's the one thing that doesn't have any permanent repercussions even if you change your mind and that's what they're taking away it's, it's just so ugly and in most countries, in many places, it's like the opposite from too easy. It's actually, it's very gate-kept. The ideas that the doctors and the staff at the clinics are really outdated. People basically have to like pretend that they fit into these very stereotypical models of like manliness or uh, femininity in order to like even get anywhere during the process like if anything this kind of uh if people actually cared about the kids who decided to go into this process they should be focused on improving the quality and like updating updating the policies that they follow at these clinics and during the process like more care should be uh, given to it, like more resources, more more research, more whatever, instead of trying to shut everything down and just ban things. Like the way to prevent and to minimize this, uh, you know, pe the small portion of people who regret their decisions is not to make things harder. It is to give more resources to these people who care for them and yeah give them give them more time to think over their choices for instance through prescribing the blockers yep or in other ways since one thing that is also reported by people who have gone through the process or who have tried to get through the process is that they 
feel that they are forced to pretend or forced to present as uh, as binary trans people. So people who are assigned female at birth feel the need to pretend that they feel 100% male and the other way around in order to get anywhere in the in the system. And like, like, I think it's really easy to see how this kind of system would make young people, it would like make them more likely to go through with something they didn't actually want just to get even like part way through. Yeah. Like this binary, uh, uh, super binary uh, idea of uh, gender is actually hurting the kids more. Mm. Yeah, I'm, I'm having a study here that was released pretty recently, which is a good one. It's, it's one of the large combination studies just to see the general health care of the people. And this is 27,715 respondents, right? Um, and the finding is this study demonstrates an association between general affirming surgery and improved mental health outcomes. These results contribute new evidence to support the provision of gender affirming surgical care for TGD people. And um, I mean, you can you can read it on your own, but I I, wa- I want to be clear here, and and this is kind of the thing. Whenever and there are gonna be people that that regret everything in life. There, there's there's you you never have something like a one hundred percent success rate. But I have I mean, there to are say, people who regret having kids. Yeah, uh, quite a few. I mean, the, uh, I want to. What I want to say here still is that uh, given, given, given that there are, and, and I, I can tell you, almost every single case here that is ever that's ever a little bit controversial, the right wing media will hold it up as a trophy. And given how many people that has actually gone through this, it's it's quite incredibly few. Uh, that and and obviously that doesn't mean that people don't have complaints, but it's typically uh, complaints uh, that that are on the other end of things. They feel that they had to wait too long, because you can imagine. I I think if you're a guy, right, um, and you're comfortable being a guy, let's the, the, when you grow a little, let's say that tomorrow you're gonna start feeling something in your breasts, right? And you're starting to grow um, uh, girl tits, essentially, right? And your dick starts shrinking away, right? I think you'd be pretty worried about that. And you'd, you'd want uh, some form of medical care for that. And this is, I mean, th- this can actually, at least the breast thing is something that's quite common to guys. Uh, if you've had your... Uh, if you have had testicular cancer, there's some types of complications that can lead to this. And it tends to, me- to make them extremely, uh, you can get extremely uh, depressed. Um, this um, is, and obviously there are also people who are born, who are biologically a lot harder to define. I mean, even, uh, sin- even from when they are born, right? Yeah, and these people like... They they get like medically unnecessary surgery as tiny babies just to make the parents or like the doctors uh, caring for them more comfortable. Like they think that it will somehow automatically make their life worse to have like both bits, for instance. And that's just not true in many cases. Like there is unnecessary medically unnecessary surgery being done on very small kids and you don't see many of these trans yeah. panic people being upset over that yeah i mean that's one of the weirdest things like when you have yeah. uh, and it's worth to bring up and maybe even reinforce uh i used to know the exact percentage but there is around one percent that is born with without uh, obvious or or with double gender characteristics um even from, from when you're born, it could be uh, your chromosomes, it could be genitals, it could be hard to tell, you don't really know what is, what, what's going to happen. Th- there are a lot of these types of, com- of complications that can happen, and normally the doctors make a call. We'll make this a boy. And that's, you know, now we're talking super small kids who gets their nature taken away from them. The outrage should be complete here, but it's not, right? 
I'm just reinforcing yeah. that point because it's important. Um, yeah, anyhow. and sometimes like the, I mean, these people, the word for these people is intersex. And sometimes in addition to these operations being performed on them as tiny kids, they never get told. Like sometimes their parents don't get told or sometimes nobody just tells the kid that this uh, they have like, uh, different chromosomes or some kind of a uh, medical uh, like abnormality that caused the intersex uh, condition or characteristics. Like, and abnormality is and condition is maybe a bad word here, since not all of them are uh, dangerous or like harmful, or not all of them come. Uh, not all of them come with like significant comorbidities. But still, uh, it, it's pretty common for them to never know until uh, something gets fucked up in their care, uh, like medical care, later on in life. Like they might even get like run into like uh, life-threatening mistakes that are made during their health, their medical care later on in life because they didn't know about being intersex. Yeah. Yeah, it's uh, it's the way it is. Uh, hopefully, we're <laughs> I should remind Alpha Bufa to come in here more, more and talk about it. I mean, and obviously, uh, there's actually quite a lot of good episodes on Mira's channel and ours before where we go through this in particular because it's an important, it's an important issue naturally for these people, but uh, but it's also one of these things where you have a very unholy alliance between uh, a sizable part of the feminist movement, at least in Sweden, and uh, the, um, the right wing, mm. um, where both of them stands on the same side in saying that gender is absolutely fixed and there is nothing you can do about it and want to kind of pretend to close their eyes for the fact that we aren't really born into binary sets of gender. We weren't born into a binary. Um, uh, okay, this is fun though. US expresses discomfort against EU tech policies targeting American tech giants. Fun, I'm not, but, but I, 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 I don't know. Every time, at least, I'm a little bit proud when they do something. Then when I start reading about what they've done, it just sounds like they're gonna be even worse, like, or, or rather that it's corrupt in some other way. But just funny that the US is upset about EU trying to rein in their tech companies since they're trying to do that themselves right now. Like, yeah, they're also at it. So I'm, I just, I'm actually, I didn't have time to look, like, read through the article, but I'm interested in what exactly they are upset over since they are also doing all these antitrust probes and trying to figure out how to regulate speech on platforms, for instance. So, Maybe there's some kind of a conflicting, conflicting. Mm. Uh, yeah. Um, approach to it. I don't know. Yeah, I, I'll, I'll try to read. I'll see. It's not. Oh, it's really short. Actually, it's incredible. Uh, it's not going to say a lot. The United States has urged European Union against pursuing protectionist. I like the fact that they are using this uh, technology policies that particularly target American companies. Last week, the White House National Security Council, a forum used by the president to discuss national security, military and foreign policies with senior advisors and cabinet officials, expressed its displeasure, displeasure with the tone of recent comments criticizing EU, the centerpiece tech law, as debates in the European Parliament were about to be. This, I mean, it's incredibly important. Listen to who... Is in who is worried about this? All right, it's not the tech companies. <laughs> this is the national security, military, and foreign policy advisors. Okay, it goes to say something about the way that they use the data uh, that we are. <laughs> they're afraid it may uh, hinder their ab ability to collect data and to be in, in information control. Um, it seems, because this is, I'm, I have no idea why the military 
and this national security people would be there talk, taking offense with this. They, they, and just open kind of the unreal. rest of the article. Just oh, click yeah. the oh, gray there button. Go. Yeah, sorry. I did, oh, didn't even see. The NC, NSC wrote in an email as part of routine communication between Washington and Brussels that there was a concern about the recent comments by Andreas Schwab, the EU Parliament's Digital Markets Act rapporteur, uh, who argued that DMA should clearly target one of the five largest American corporations. It was also highlighted that comments and tactics like this make regulatory cooperation between the United States and Europe extremely difficult. It sends the impression that the European Commission is not interested in working in good faith with America to resolve these common difficulties in a way that benefits shared interests, said NSC to the staff, the EU's delegation in Washington. Protectionist uh, measures could disadvantage European citizens and hold back innovation. I mean, this is this same bullshit every time. In member state economies, such policies will hinder our ability to work together and harmonize our regulatory systems, added the emails reported by the Financial Times. According to the European Commission, the DMA specifies set objective criteria for determining whether a big online platform qualifies as gatekeeper. This allows the DMA to stay focused on the problem it wants to solve in terms of massive systematic web systemic web platforms. These criteria will be met if a company holds a solid economic position, has a major impact on the internet, internal market, and operates in numerous EU nations, has a significant intermediation position, which means it connects a large number of enterprises to a large number of users, as well as, or, as well as has, or is about to have, a market entrench, entrenched and long-lasting position, implying that it's stable over time. Some large online platforms act as gatekeepers in digital markets. The DMA aims to ensure that these platforms behave in a fair way online. Together with the Digital Service Act, the DMA is one of the centerpieces of the European digital strategy. It's much longer, but I think that's th this is a super important thing to understand. Like we, uh, and as you pointed out, and this is not the only market. We, for whatever reasons, we have we have come to accept that markets that have you know that are mature are controlled in an oligarchical way. I mean, there is only a few actors that control the markets in different ways, and they're entrenched, meaning. The legislation is there to help them as well. It's almost impossible to compete uh, with any of the larger players in the larger established markets already. It's interesting to see, uh, and perhaps important uh, at least, to see some voices being raised for this because I think people do understand the enormous influence that these gateway companies have. Not only do they control the infrastructure uh, of other players, completely meaning they can shut them off they can turn them down they can send them down the recommended list uh, i mean we see these on youtube we see these on we see this on google play we've seen it on apple we see it absolutely everywhere where they are controlling the market um but also um i mean it, fundamentally you need to have some legal way of either claiming some of the infrastructure and saying, hey, this is something that, or, or finding the companies in large, when we talked about this last week, right? Yeah. Where the fines are actually going up in size. Again, it doesn't seem to be enough to deter these companies from uh, doing these practices. And as you point out, it's interesting to say, US is trying to do the same thing and I'm unsure why they, are taking this particular stance because I don't think that this is something that is hidden, you know, that it's a surprise uh, in the US. Uh, and it's interesting to see that the ones complaining here are the militaries, are the military uh, and the national security. And that, that says something about how these platforms are being used. Yeah. I mean, the, the something very... Uh I guess key to the whole issue is this bit about legislation that might disproportionately impact American technology companies. So this whole question of proportionality, that's the challenge with regulating platforms and online businesses. As you said, it, the regulation usually, like the norm tends to be that it has to be the same for everyone. And the tendency there is, is that the big players can lobby 
to make it favorable to themselves, which leaves all the small and medium-sized competitors foundering. Mm. So the challenge, the central challenge, is exactly how to, maybe disproportionately, that's a question of perspective, target the big players who are, to begin with, in a position to uh, uh, play unfair or in, uh, like engage in uh, anti-competitive behavior at a massive scale. Mm. Like that's the whole core of the question, uh, this whole issue. Yeah, it's weird to bring up nationalistic are, arguments yeah. here. I mean, obviously, everyone knows that the biggest tech companies that Europe let in, open its door to, and let in. We didn't have to, you know, we could have done like with China. Market, yeah, their market size wouldn't be as big if they went let, yeah. let into Europe. Like, if they weren't allowed to play as freely as they have played until now. Yeah, and I... You know, so it's a weird argument to say, hey, look, you are disproportionately targeting us. Yeah, well, look, all of the big tech companies come from your country. And they happen to be US companies right now, yeah. but they could not, uh, they might not be US companies in the future. And it wouldn't really matter. I mean, look at it. If, if they were all Chinese companies, they would be gone by now. Like a lot of them, a lot of them have much, much, much stricter laws to what they can do uh, and how they can act. And, you know, in some cases, probably for good reasons. Uh, but the fact that we, uh, that we uh, are starting to do something about this, and I mean, I'm not, you know, I don't want to say anything before they have actually enacted the laws and see how they act, because normally these are super watered down or the people who get in position to enforce these laws get corrupted. Because the amount of money that is in this type of power that we're talking about exactly. that, that is, is just, it's incredible. It's beyond belief. We were looking at, I mean, the fines that these companies get for breaking the laws in Europe is on the is on four point. What well, we're looking at, the, the heftiest fine was four point two billion euro, right? And they still continue. I mean, they yeah, make the financial. Fine. It's a single fine. It's not like accumulated over a sort of period. It's just wasn't yeah. it? Yeah, yeah, that was just one. That was the the highest fine. Uh, there was another one, I think, around two billion euro. Uh, the, the latest one that we were looking at was like 200 million, but that was in France alone. Um, but they are, they are calculating these sort, and they are still continuing uh, with these type of business practices. And to be fair, in, in a lot of the other regulations and legislation that has come to place, particularly in this year, has only been, is only enforcing their uh, majority position and stakes on the market. And they are getting their own, and uh, the governments of different countries are getting their own uh, file into these companies to be able to control the, the output on these platforms. I mean, that, that's the sort of infrastructure that's being built now. So I'm just hoping that these type of law gets up there really quick and that they're actually going to use them to make sure uh, that we do not get a, a hyper-global type of um, oligarchy on these markets, the, the ones that we are seeing in effect right now. Uh, that is yeah, not I mean, positive for any form of innovation. Let me say that much, at least. I mean, I guess the ideal outcome of this is that the EU legislation uh, succeeds in clearing the playing field enough that... European competitors, uh, competitors actually have a chance yeah. against the current market you know, powers. Yeah, and I mean, th that's such a good point as well. I mean, you can say whatever you want about China's strategy on, on its internet, but the fact that it has allowed an incredibly big and powerful and booming tech sector to grow up there, that's just a fact. And uh, while Europe is hopelessly behind, in a lot of these uh, these regards, right? And obviously not all of them, but we are, we do lack big modern tech companies. And this is something that's often been complained about. And obviously one of the reasons is that there's just, you cannot compete, right? Um, and unfortunately, a large part of that reason is unfair business practices and also the laws that have been forced upon EU, or in some cases, villainly being enforced that put them into a position 
where they are entrenched. Um, they are essentially a part of the fundamental infrastructure of Europe. And when companies have that sort of luxury, and, and there's exactly what they're saying here at some point as well. Um, yeah, but uh, yeah, anyhow, it, it's, um, let's see what happens. There's some yeah, the little... Point about fundamental or critical infrastructure, as I tend to call it, is also important since critical infrastructure tends to be something that nation states or like political power, like regional political powers tend to want to have some kind of a hold on. Yeah. So in terms of just, you know, geopolitics and like just politics as usual, it's extremely under, like it makes perfect sense yeah for the EU to, to be doing this yeah it does i mean this is this is something that should have been done years ago Let, let's see what happens i mean i we need yeah. to take care of our online infrastructure it's not like i mean it, it's yeah it, and it's so late to do it now but whatever Anyhow, it's time to talk about Finland. Oh dear. <laughs> Maybe I'm a little bit too excited. I'm not sure uh, it went very, so well. Very exciting Ooh. municipal elections. So like the lowest level of administration, just cities and municipalities. There is Let actually even a... The true Finns are going strong. Actually not. Oh, really? And wow. they're, they're called the basic Finns. Yeah, <laughs> that's... What we decided. Okay, yeah, the basics. Like right. the official name is just the Finns, but that's very awkward. So we're choosing to not call them the true Finns, but instead the basic Finns. Because basic is actually a more accurate description of the actual name in Finnish. Just, just, just a sidetrack question. What does pimple call? What's pimple called in Finnish? Pimple, like. Zit. Uh, depends on what kind, but maybe like nap. Okay, because the the same the name for zit and someone from Finland is the same in Swedish. Okay. Yeah, you should uh, name them Rotsi in Finland and get back at the, get back at the stupid naming convention. Yeah, mm. uh, but the Finn part against NC. Oh, yeah. Yeah, I'm go I'm I'm running li really slow since I only now, uh, yeah, I only now um got that. Yeah, Finn is one word for it. <laughs> it is. <laughs> Wait, it is like okay, Finn. No. <laughs> but you you obviously wouldn't say Finn. You saw me, right? Everything is different. Saw me. But the f so the basic Finns party gains at least. Then was this was this uh, for me and, and yeah, everyone else? Like they they were polling at they were polling really high, but they didn't get as much as they were polling at. Ah, uh, okay. So we oh, that's the thing. They are still kind of a in that sense. They are still a protest party. They yeah. like people tell the pollsters that they are voting for them, but they don't actually bother going and, like, doing the actual voting on the day. So there's, like, a big... Uh, there can be a big difference between the actual result and the, even the very recent polls. Mm. But there were plus 5.7, which is big. Right, at least according to this so far. Yeah, it's big. Like they were at a pretty harsh low the last time we had in this polls. They had just split into two, so and they were still recovering from that. But now they've had uh, some time. Uh, they've spent some time in the opposition, and their political opponents have been in the government coalition. So they've gained a pretty decent boost out of that so just to go through that again the, what's the the ncp here is the Samlingsparti. yet that's the conservative party kind of i mean the 
big like uh, big right wing party has both both conservatives and neolibs. Yeah, and then you have the SDP, Social, Social Democrats. Democratic Party, and the center. And I guess the SDP were in the ruling coalition with the center. Yeah. The ruling coalition is SDP, Center, Greens, Left, and Svenska Folk Folkpartiet. SPP. Correct? SPP is the Swedish Folk Party. SFP. SFP. What am I blind? This actually says SPP here. Uh, anyway, Swedish People's Party. That makes sense. They probably translated. I thought we'd go for the native stuff first since, uh, like, if. <laughs> Come on, it's the municipal elections in Finland. People mm. are if people aren't falling asleep already, they are now. <laughs> yeah, it's just good. it's um yeah okay. I just I, mean, I, I think I there's a lot of similarities about the. I could I mean I'm not sure how much there is to tell, but there was this uh this thing happened with uh, with the results in Tampere where this old SFP guy. Like literally, like ninety years old or something, ninety-two, uh, who was the only candidate for SFP in one of the major cities in Finland. He died two weeks before the election day, Oops. and still enough people voted for him that since SFP was in coalition with the NCP in the area, the NCP actually like won the whole city like they were the biggest party thanks to those votes to the old fabo so <laughs> far bro basically an old guy old swedish speaking guy uh decided the results in one of finland's biggest cities yeah by dying too i mean it that's an open question like whether it actually matter that the guy died like it could be like if he was yeah, like ninety two years old and they like Tampere isn't one of like the biggest uh cities or areas for Swedish speaking Finns. So there must have been like his voters might be so old and stubborn mm. that they either have hadn't just heard about him dying or would have voted for him anyway. <laughs> I mean it's it's pretty fucked up actually. Yeah, I, ge I guess sure this goes. Kind of a discussion being had, whether like there is some kind of a reasonable explanation in the law why they can't just say you know remove or disqualify an actual dead person from the list. But yeah, yeah. Yep, that's a discussion you're gonna have to have. I guess we have to make uh, a PSA I'm too. Sure people are going to be. Some people are going to be upset about it. There's maybe going to be some clickbaity or uh, <laughs> news bits about it or two. I love clickbait. For a couple of days, which is now we we are a couple of days past the election, so that means like it's done. They're going to forget about it, and then we're going to this is going to happen again yeah. in one or two elections, and then everyone's going to be shocked again. They never, they never make any changes to the system, ever. But I mean, that's I'm a sure good. You know uh, about this. Yeah, no, that's it's hard. Well, it's just not, it's not fashion. But that's cool. Uh, I guess I'm not sure what to say about this as a Swedish. Uh, uh, I wish that if, if like when I'm 92 and an old Swedish farbro, I want to make sure. Uh, I'm gonna, <laughs> I'm gonna move to Finland and and be a part of SPP. <laughs> That's that's my my now my life goal. Hopefully though I'm gonna You'll be in a court long uh, before that. Hopefully though yeah, probably. Hopefully though Why would you I'm want gonna, to move to Finland. Yeah, well, this, uh, I'm gonna be in a coalition with uh, better parties and then give them and the power. Me, and, and me. Yep. Me and Kringon is moving to Finland to retake the eastern provinces. We're gonna move Good there. With that. <laughs> hopefully, <laughs> Hopefully you'd we can. Have better, you'd have better uh, success moving to Orland and starting trying to start an independence movement. I think they have an independence party there, and yeah. the independence party has like one guy who actually is in the like the regional parliament that they have. Nice. So you might want to reach out to him. So we can start a war with Orland as well. Cool. No, I mean. 
but they're basically autonomous. So I don't let's know. Go, man. They got no military. We, let's fucking go, man. No, we're I gonna mean, take we them for the pirate to, party. We might may want. Yeah, we may want to find out. Uh, what happens if the independence party there gets like a majority in the parliament, regional parliament, or alternatively, yeah, we could just uh, found some kind of a pir independent pirate island, uh, island uh, pirate haven, and see how it goes. Uh, it's gonna happen. Play the song. What song? Um. Uh. Anyhow. The um, but yeah, basically, Orland has is way too good as far as I'm aware. They're like exempt from some taxes, they're exempt from mandatory conscription, they're exempt from so many things, they're demilitarized, they have like a decent degree of autonomy, they have it way too well. Like, there's a reason they're staying under Finland and not trying to apply for being part of Sweden since they have alcohol. Them. They wouldn't be get. Uh, uh, they wouldn't get as many nice things from Sweden as they are getting from us. So that's why they want us. To, like, <laughs> yeah. They don't want to dis uh, us to disown them or. Yeah. And I remember when I was when I was there last Deal time, and I went to the sauna. I'm gonna be honest with you. They're Finnish people. They're not Swedish people. God damn it. No, we're, we're, we're not going to play your song, Kenta. You have not been a good boy tonight. <laughs> yeah, no, you know. You know this in a sauna where do. someone is from. Bad behavior, so this, Kenta. So this is what you're trying to do, like how strange these trolls? Yes. We have been so successful with so many of them. Kenta used to be such a good boy. I do not know what happened tonight. I think these are these are two topics that this is on his list. Yeah, we still have some um, um, encouragement to do. Yeah, to get the fucking wire, the hose. Um, but um, uh, I'm not sure what else there is to tell about the municipals. No, nah, many I think people it's fine. treat this as some kind of a you know support check. Mm. Uh, I, uh, like a check-in uh, of how the government coalition is doing. Yeah, it's Which a pre is it's a precursor. It's a worrying because, precursor, probably. Yeah, because pe things actually get done on the municipal level. They have a lot of power over mm. how stuff is done in their areas or their administrative areas. Some people think they might even have a little too much autonomy. Uh, so it's sad that people are just treating this as an extension of the national but it's, election. It's the same problem in Sweden. In Sweden, we have the regions, and everything is voted on the same day, which means that people are yeah, that's even worse. Uh, are just voting for. for I mean, they uh, even though I think the municipal some a little bit at, on the regional level, no one no one even knows. No one has any yeah, fucking I mean, clue, and that's also often where where that's where our healthcare is, and that's where some of the big infrastructure project goes, mm -hmm. and it just gets completely corrupted every time, and fucked up. Um, yeah, it's a mixed bag, I guess. Since I imagine that the turnout tends to be a bit better if you have everything at the same time. Yeah. But then you just like obviously you won't have enough time to actually cover everything that's getting voted like. Oh, absolutely not. Voted on. No, and, and like with the local media the dying. When we, own, uh, when we have them one at a time. Yeah. There just isn't enough coverage of the things that matter. And the media definitely isn't helping with that. No, it's... it's uh, I mean, it's, I, I guess most people just vote one party down ballot. And that's horrible because it can be, particularly on regional level and municipal level, it can be huge, huge differences between the parties. And what they want to do, and um, yeah, it's uh, it's bad. It's actually really bad. Uh, I'm not sure how to solve it either. They are talking about moving them to different dates here in Sweden, which I think would be it's probably better, but it it doesn't really solve the fundamental issue. Um, that yeah, it's something um, very fundamental to just the parliamentary like this represent representative system in general. People just, the average person 
doesn't have either the time nor the interest no. to actually follow what's going on and make informed decisions. And like many of the and many of the people who might have the interest or who may be interested or it may have may have some co- something to contribute to the processes of decision making, they may not have the time nor ener- uh, or energy because they are having economic difficulties of, of some sort or they have and or they have a family to look after. There are so many reasons and this is just another plug for base universal basic income. It absolutely is. I mean just like, just so being many, able to get a lot of people uh, Yeah. Like there are many unfortunately many of the uh reforms or like the impro- small improvements like the systemic improvements that say the pirate parties promote like a more direct form of democracy or some kinds of uh experiments with direct democracy and just many uh for instance transparency increased tra- transparency and openness in governance like the sad thing is that those things alone don't count for much like you also have to pe- you also need people who have the time and the energy and the opportunities to get familiar with the issues and look into the issues yeah. and pay attention and do something about it organize yeah i i think that grassroots organization is is, is fundamental and I don't, and i think that's more fundamental issue than the date that the election is being held there was yeah, a time when everyone was talking about certain... polit- politics and people were organized into unions where they were actually a part of the unions you know and when where the the political discussion was something that you could that you had yeah but, but it was mm-hmm. just a regular part of activities other activities as well yeah yeah and like transparency it doesn't unfortunately it doesn't count for much to i don't know aut- automatically open certain date like all public data sets or something since it's still going to be a very select few people who have the expertise and the time to somehow make a take advantage of those and use that information yeah so that's why you also need to it's it's just not enough yeah. on its own i thought parents and openness aren't enough on their own. No. they're really important but they're just one piece of the puzzle mm. i thought i was going to share you uh my tinder profile oh wow well, check it out do you have any matches yeah many what's what's your description like um i live in a dumpster i am a raccoon no. and i'm nice. two miles away from this person at least nice it's pretty nice what does the uh, icon mean like the golden heart is it, do you have some kind of a premium it, yeah of yeah, course I yeah paid for it you got a premium kingland paid for nice. winrar yeah yeah i mean nice. you you got to pay for for your uh, reproduction that's just a fact you got to course step course. behind people in the in the line Th- this yeah, is one of <laughs> don't do foxes for twenty friendly. That's all he wrote. This is one of the yeah. It, this is one of the really fucked up thing about. Uh, I mean, this is actually really fucked up. This this one one part where <laughs> where Tinder just really commodifies our ability to meet people, which is pretty sick. Uh, quite crazy. Uh, anyhow, I thought this one was cute. And uh, yeah, if I ever it's get a Tinder profile, this is going to be it. I may not have this age, though. Not sure. May or may not. <laughs> raccoon years. Yeah, raccoon years. I wonder how old that is. That's like 200 years old. Uh, I actually think raccoons can be quite old. Oh, we missed our... We, we got to check this one out as well. This one's pretty cute. Look at these little attacking kittens. This is fucking insane. Oh, that's several monorail cats at a time. Whoa. Yeah, not quite monorail. <laughs> yeah. You can see that. Yeah, they're moving a little bit. <laughs> yeah, you see their asses. It's kind of funny. And they turn into cryptids at the end. Yeah, they do. You see that? Just like blobs with 
void for eyes. Yeah, it's really fun. I like how the, in the beginning they're marching in as one. Yeah, I see. The end. Did you see the end? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Ha! Nice! I should have uh, kind of shuffled those in in, in in better places, but we're learning. Um... That's it. That's actually all the news we had, at least. Uh, I want to remind you to, please, again, go inside here, uh, follow, subscribe, obviously, but go in here and tell us what you would like to hear on more international news. Should we do, like, more takedowns of uh, right-wing media or what, what I know, even some left-wing media that you would like or liberal media that would like us to cover more? Uh, do you have some particular request, uh, ideas and thoughts? I mean, let us know. We're still testing this I mean out. So even even if it led to a very very lengthy debate last week, the I guess the Macron getting slapped nose bit yeah. was <laughs> the kind of thing we are looking for because we we actually like I actually learned something new like I I learned that there are still monarchists in the country and that's this is the important stuff this is the yeah. interesting stuff like what kind of like political movements or divisions there actually exist across Europe since uh, the whole premise uh, one of the one of the initial thoughts that led to uh, us trying to run this program mm. was that we know way too much about what goes on the, in the US like I could name some uh, US minor parties like marginal uh, marginal parties and that's like a two-party system, but I couldn't do the same for most European countries. No. And I think it's pretty sad. Yeah. So, and even for big ones like France, like, there's so much <laughs> that just doesn't get picked up on by the news. Yeah, and, and our Anywhere super a super governmental body that controls a lot. I have no fucking clue what's going on. You, you got more uh, ideas, but I bet you that there is no one else I think it's going to come I mean, back and hit EU the Danish Social impossible. Democrats pretty hard uh, when they yeah, realize the they can't do that. Impossible to keep track of. It's yeah. just... And that's not very good for democracy, that's for sure. Yeah. Anyway, that's it for, uh, for today. Tomorrow, Thank next you. week, first of all, uh, there will be a Thursday. No, when? Mm. Wednesday. Uh, we'll there do will this be again. Thursday and Wednesday next week. That there, is completely correct. Yep, and there may even be other days, but uh, I will guarantee you that there will be a Wednesday. God, I shouldn't guarantee that. Who knows? <laughs> Who knows, really? Uh, but probably there will be a Wednesday, and at 21, we will have our PTV Global. And tomorrow at 7, we are going to just have a normal... News day, I think. Well, uh, maybe syndicalism is coming by. I think that's every other week, but we haven't. We, we are in discussions. Uh, if I will be here tomorrow. I will be here. I think I'm almost sure. Okay, Otto will probably be here. Give if there most is a likely. Thursday, he will be here. But we don't know yet. We'll see most in a likely. couple of hours. Um, also, uh, something to look forward to. It's almost certain now that we're going to get an Icelander on sometime in July to tell us about the upcoming elections. So that's super great. Keep tuning in. Yes. Uh, I tried booking the effing Icelandic for so long time. They didn't have time for me. They didn't care. And now you ask and they suddenly have time. I've been... Uh, Grew them. I, I've been cultivating my Icelandic relations for years now. Yeah, I figured. Just... Fucking isolated seal clubbing MFers. Oh, wait, yeah. that's Norwegians, right? Or Icelandic uh, clubbing shark, as well? Shark clubbing. Are they clubbing sharks? I'm okay with shark Whales, clubbers. Whales, even. I'm, Whale I'm not okay yeah. with You need, they need really killing. big clubs, though. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Penis sized clubs. Yeah. Yeah. Anyhow, we'll see you tomorrow. Bye-bye. Uh, or will we? Will they be tomorrow? Week. Well, if there is tomorrow, we will see you then. If tomorrow ever comes. So good. P.T.V. Oberoende. Piratistisk media. Skapad och finansierad av tittarna.